everything that we do experience, everything that we experience, everything that um, we interact with um, comes from the external world. But it is our internal experience. So if we say that um, there is a flower, or if we say that this, there is a blanket here, what we perceive, what we know of that blanket is not the real thing, it's not the actual blanket, it's not the actual object, it is what our mind reconstructs of it after having received through the light waves the information. So we, in our mind, reproduce the waves of the external world that we are capable of catching and reproducing and then we experience that thing internally and therefore it has been said that the whole universe is within us because whatever we know of the external world whatever we believe to be real of the external world is not external what we know of it is only our internal reproduction of that. It also means that mind is not at all free from the influences of the external world. It continually interacts with the um, objects and the information that it gets from the external world. It brings them inside and processes them in its own unique way. Every different mind processes things in its own unique way and therefore if we have um, several people watching the same thing, watching the in front of the same landscape or um, experiencing the same, having the same experience at the same time, doing something together, they will each um, get an impression from that which is different. Some people will not see something that somebody else uh, noticed quite uh, clearly. Somebody will say, oh, didn't you say, didn't you see that? And the other person will say, no, I didn't, even, I didn't even notice there was anything like that. Oh, yes, why? Because according to the mental inclination, we also find something in the external world that matches our level of understanding and our need. And we take that, we single it out, we, ad we identify it out of many, many informations that are out there, and we take it in and we bring that home, and we leave the other things um, unnoticed. And so our experience is um, completely dependent on the type of um, inclinations that we have, on the, on the ideas that we have, on the aspirations that we have. Mind is forever projected externally under normal circumstances. It is, there are two movements. Movement is a must and mind also moves. Mind can move towards the external world, towards the world of physicalities. Even the physicalities may be very subtle, but they are physicalities. Um, mind can move towards the external world and bring part of that external world after having processed it in its own way to become part of its own reality, internal reality, constructing its own reality, its own universe, or less, um, less normally, less usually, mind can move in a different direction. It can go, instead of projecting itself towards the external world and absorbing information from the external world, it can reverse the trend of movement, detach itself from the external world, and move and flow inwards, towards consciousness. So there are two movements of mind, two basic movements of mind. One is from, from mind to the external world, to the physical world. We can say from mind 
to matter, to the world of matter. And the other is from mind to consciousness. Of course, the first type, mind to matter, is what we are, uh, with, is what our minds are mostly engaged with. We are less familiar with the movement from mind towards of mind towards consciousness. But if these two movements are possible for mind, then surely they have uh, two functions, two very particular functions. The, the, I just said that when we um, are in front or we experience something, we're in front of, uh, um, we position ourselves in front of the external world, we automatically, um, unconsciously choose the information which is suitable to us and leave the rest alone. There are um, certainly times when we experience uh, that, uh, or we um, learn something new, or we understand something new. Uh, we have a small or big realization. All of a sudden, something dawns on us. And then, for some days, or for a period of time after that, we find the confirmation of that realization through things we read, through uh, things that people talk. It, uh, it appears to us all of a sudden when before it was in the unknown world. And some people think, oh, you know, like s suddenly all these things are coming to me. But actually they were there before. Only mind was not ready to, to, to take them in. They were there. Once the mind becomes open and um, realizes something new that opens that window, then the light can come. It was there, the light was there before, but the window was closed, the curtain was drawn, so the information could not enter. Mm -hmm. So that information, what we choose from the external world, is um, food for our mind. Mind always needs to, to, um, to take something, to um, to nurture itself, uh, mind moves, it is not static. Um, it's, it wants to, um, to understand more, to, uh, uh, to grow, to expand. And so it is naturally for mind to nurture itself in order to draw the inspiration, the information that is necessary for its natural growth, which is its, um, its, um, its nature. It cannot stop doing that, and that's why mind always moves. It's always searching something. So mind, like we are careful, or we ought to be careful, um, what food we put inside our body, then even more careful should we be regarding the food that we put in our mind. If there is uh, a shortage of food, and um, a food which is healthy for the body cannot be found, then there is no choice. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, if there is a shortage of um, food, of, a he of healthy food for the mind, then there is no choice. And in a way, this is what we are experiencing in the world, in society. Um, there is a shortage, um, artificial shortage, of uh, mental food which encourages, inspires, enables the mind to make its movement towards consciousness. 